Hi, this is Nicole Rivera, and you're listening to the Stop Writing Alone podcast. This week, I have a pleasure of sharing an interview with Tammy Brightweiser, who's a friend of mine, who is a teacher and a teacher coach and a pretty prolific writer. I'm always telling you guys that I'm dropping things in the show notes here and there, but Tammy was such a wealth of information of all the various online challenges that she's going to be a part of just this month alone that I highly recommend wherever you're listening to this podcast that you dive into the show description and just scroll through. First of all, at the top of the the list of links, you'll find all of the links of where you can connect with Tammy um, to talk to her about all the things that she's involved in, including the 100 Rejections Project that she is doing herself. But then just to keep on going to resource after resource after resource. Um, It is a superpower of a coach to have a bag of tricks. And Tammy delivers on that one for sure. But I want to dive right into this interview. I had such a great time talking with Tammy and getting into the nitty gritty about all these things. So I can't wait to share it with you. Enjoy. I hope everybody is safe and well. And I'm handing you over to the interview. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here today with Tammy Brightweiser. Tammy and I have been in the Creative Life Scholars group since last August together. And since we are both uh, teachers, teacher coach, we have that teacher soul thing, we connected right away. And Tammy is also a very prolific writer. She's got her uh, coffee share on the weekends over at Medium. She's doing something that is really inspiring to me right now, the 100 Rejections. And uh, she's going to be joining me this April in the Stop Writing Alone Happy Campers Club. So there's so much that Tammy can share with us with how she is showing up out there for her writing, for her writing colleagues and community. So Tammy, introduce yourself to anybody that does not know you yet um, to our Stop Writing Alone listeners. Hello. I'm so excited that we're finally doing this. We've been talking about it for a while. Um, I'm Tammy Brightweiser, and I am a writer living in Wisconsin. And I've been a writer all my life. I started taking it um, seriously at a whole new level last January and have been moving forward since then. And I'm really excited to talk about today the 100 Rejections Project and all the ways that I control time with my writing. Mm. That sounds magical. Well, I want to start first with this last January bit. When you say you first started, you started taking it more seriously, what were you doing before them was because you are very serious so it seemed to me that it was much longer than that well i've always been a writer and it's always been important to me but in january of 2019 i decided to give myself that label of writer um yeah so that was a huge difference and um as you have come to to know me and, and the listeners will as well i love a good challenge which is part of where the hundred yeah. rejections came from, but we can talk about that. Um, I do a lot of self-imposed challenges and I had decided that I was going to write on medium and I was writing every day on, on medium because I wanted, and that was, that was taking it seriously. It was publishing in that way um, mm. to get my writing out there. I'd had a few pieces published um, at that point um, just a few things here or there on the internet, but I wanted to really kind of focus and see what would happen if I put a lot of focus on it. Got you. And I'm with you that whole, that simplicity of saying I am a writer is huge. And I'm, I'm constantly telling people to, to own it, you know, because there's so much, because somebody did it for me back on Twitter when I was first blogging and doing all this, I had put in my Twitter profile something like aspiring writer. And and somebody called me on it and they said, but you're writing, you're writing. I see you on this blog, I see you on that blog. You're telling me you're writing, you're drafting this novel. You're not aspiring. 
you're you're a writer and that permission to call myself a writer changed everything so i i can see yeah and it does but but there's there is a mindset there though i mean you can say it it's kind of like an affirmation you can say it and say it and say it but there's a point where something happens either within you or somebody else telling you or that suddenly you come to the idea that yes i am a writer i write every day and putting things out there and just because you're a writer doesn't mean that you have to be published either. I don't want listeners to think that either. I mean, Ralph, yeah. Ralph, Ralph Fletcher is a teacher um, educator, and he talks about you can be a writer with a capital W or a mm. lowercase w. The only difference is that the capital W gets paid a little bit for it. Yeah, that's beautiful. I like that because I, I agree too. Yeah, I think that's the thing. I, there is that step from writer to published author, and I think too many people blur those together. Like there is that capital W writer. There's the lowercase W writer. I really like that. That's that's a um, like a clear way of thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't feel that different either. I mean, I've been paid a little bit. I mean, I'm not making like millions of Stephen King dollars, but <laughs> but it does. I mean, the writing is the writing. You're either a writer or you're not. I mean, you do it or you don't. So yeah. um, it doesn't really feel much different. And so when you started doing your challenge where you were writing every single day on Medium, did you have some sort of audience there already or were you just showing up for yourself and kind of hoping you would find people? How did that relationship between you as writer and potential reader develop? Well, I tried to be strategic about it because I had a blog before then and I had built up... Um, over a thousand followers there. So mm -hmm. I tried to cross promote and then I, I really love Twitter. You can find me on Twitter. I used Twitter to help build up my blog following and then made sure that I promoted my medium pieces. So I did kind of do a bit of research before then, like you can't mm -hmm. just put pieces on medium and then hope somebody reads them because I didn't have a following then. Um, so I did work um, to interact with people. I didn't want it to be false, like just, you know, to see that number go up. So I yes. wanted that community to be there to, to connect with other writers that were interested in things that I was interested in um, and to clap for other people. But then Medium changed a little bit when the algorithm changed and how clapping wasn't as important because um, I put a lot of poetry on Medium as well. Right. Yeah. I think that that shift in medium has has gotten a lot of people thinking twice. And it's also like you're talking about this this community that you built around that first wave or at least that that wave of um, interaction on medium. If you don't have that method of connecting through the claps, <laughs> then the whole sort of communication and community changes as a result. Absolutely. Have, yeah. So have you moved from medium? Are you like, what is your feeling? Just because I mean, I don't want to talk all about medium. But since you've you've had so much experience with it, are you feeling like you want to get a, like pull those followers to another place with you now? Or are you staying faithful and enjoying your space on medium? I'm still on medium. I just don't post as much on there mm -hmm. um partially that's due to the algorithm changing and um the money difference i mean that was the beautiful part about medium is that you could be a paid yeah. writer right. um but i don't know where i want to go from there because we're in we're it because i'm in the middle of the 100 rejection project i'm really focusing on sending my short stories and poetry out to be published in other places. Right. And so I've mostly been promoting that through uh, Twitter, my newsletter, and then a little bit with Instagram. Right. Cool. But I haven't abandoned Medium. I'm just not as prolific on it's there. It's your first line of exposure. No, not right now. Yeah. Not right now. So I feel like I'm stepping into segue mode here. Can we talk about the 100 Rejections Project? 
Absolutely. I'm so and what well, first first and foremost, like what inspired it? Because I I yeah, your self-imposed challenges is that speaks to my soul so deeply. <laughs> <laughs> and so when you started this, it was right at a point where I was like, I literally cannot add another thing, but I've actually started quietly <gasps> in my own corner. Uh, like when I say I like submitted like one thing, but I wrote it down and I was like, that is number one. <laughs> that <laughs> and is I awesome. am going to go for 100. But I still haven't gotten the full Tammy Br- Breitweiser uh, explanation and education on what is your uh, 100 rejections project. All right. See, I am the accidental inspirationalist, like things I do. <laughs> accidentally inspired it's not why i do them but other people get inspired so no that makes me really happy that you have number one yes you have a spreadsheet i i have a spreadsheet okay excellent okay so we'll talk we'll talk (laughs) what should i have in the spreadsheet i think i have all the things okay so i on my spreadsheet i have um the date column on the very left because Mm -hmm. um i wanted to track the 100 and then the second column is the numbers um, I tried to play with that a little bit. It's interesting that a challenge, you kind of develop systems as you go along and then what you think you need at the beginning and then what you change it um, as you go along. Don't be. That's why I'm asking because I think I know what I need, but yeah. I'm curious to yeah. see what you have. <laughs> um, so I have the numbers because um, I looked at it this morning and then I have um, the name of the piece that I've sent mm-hmm. and then I have the place that I sent it. Um, and then I have the date that I sent it and then, um, the day that I hear from them and then it pre-populates, it counts up how many days, um, it's been since I sent it and when I hear back and then I have a comment and note section. So the comment and note section has kind of grown. Um, yeah, I, I have that one. I have, um, certain feedback from people or, um, there's also different layers of rejections. Like there's the blanket, like, this is not for us. Thank you very much for sending it. Mm -hmm. Um, there's the, we really have a lot of great writing. Um, just because we're rejecting you doesn't mean that, you know, your writing wasn't great. It's just not right for us at the, at the right time, Right. which I've learned through this project and through podcasts, um, that that's really a true statement. Like, Many, yeah, for sure. many editors have certain issues that they're looking for particular pieces, or they might have just selected something that has a similar theme, and they don't want to publish something so quickly that's similar. Um, right. So I really read what they say and take it to heart. I've gotten a few that have a little bit of feedback. Um, one was a really weird one, though. Like it, they were talking about grammar and things, and so I sent it to a writer friend in one of my communities, and I said, "Hey, can you read this for me? Because this is what I got back." And she's like, "I have no idea what they're talking about. It's fine." <laughs> so there's always one. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if it was like they really liked the story. It was really bizarre. It was a really weird story. Um, okay. So so I don't know, but I may try to send that one out to, to something else. But um, yeah. So but then that's the first page, and then I have a second page of my oh, spreadsheet. Fucking- Yes, there's a second like, tab. It's very exciting. I do not have a second page. Oh, oh you God. need the second page. So I the second you. page is where you, I can actually send you my copy too. Okay. Um, and uh, um, so on the second page is where you have all of the places that you could submit your work. Ah. Now, this is not pretty. It's a living document that changes and gets added. Um, mm. So in here, I have the name of the publication, the link to the submission page because you have to read the submission guidelines. Right. Yep. Um, and then I have other tabs for um, like when their submissions are open, um, what kind, because I write a lot of speculative fiction, but I write poetry as well. So right. in, genre uh, or whatever they're looking for. Right. And so I try to make some notes in there and a lot of it's um, like my own shorthand Right. Because there's nothing more frustrating than looking for for a piece and you're like clicking through the links and you're like, I already clicked on that three times. It is yeah. not open for submissions. Right. So like, you know, so I'm trying to cut down on the time. Yeah. I didn't think about doing that in a um, 
in the spreadsheet as well. But yeah, that's something that I've been developing myself because I too write all over the place. Like sometimes it's personal essays, sometimes it's short fiction, sometimes it's flash fiction, occasionally poetry. In fact, mm-hmm. that was my first submit. It was a poem. So well, you know, we're getting ready for April, so it's it's that's right. poetry it's, writing month. That's what it is. It's like on my mind. <laughs> yeah. The other thing I did too, as far as a system that streamlined that took me. And I literally did not do this until I was 50 submissions in. So learn from my mistake. Um, almost everybody requires a cover letter. And um, that stumped me. Yes, I had I had a, I had to make a, a cover letter for this silly little submission. I thought it was going to be a quickie, especially because it was on submittable. I was like, oh, OK, I'm, I have my file. Let me go. And then it had the section for cover letter. And I was like. Oh, I haven't, I have my query letter that I send with my novel, you know, but I don't have a cover letter. So yeah, yeah this what's is your a lot advice shorter. there? So um, I got mine. Wendy Lynn Harris has a book about um, submitting short fiction. Um, okay. And I've used a template that, that she used. It's very simple. Um, and you have to pay attention to that too, because sometimes different people want um, different things in the cover letter, but the pretty standard one is, um, hi, I'm submitting this piece. And then you say the name. Um, you know, I think it would be a good, uh, fit for your publication. And then you put like the little bio of where some of your, um, fiction or poetry has been published. Um, you know, and then a nicety of, you know, I hope to hear back from you soon. Um, some people want word counts. Some people don't, um, some, and then, so here's the thing. So some places you can only submit one piece at a time. Right. And other places, especially with Flash that we write, you Mm -hmm. can submit three to five pieces at a time and they want that. Now, sometimes they want them in separate documents and sometimes you can put them all at once. So make sure you pay attention. Yeah, yeah. But so that cover letter, obviously, you would have to say, I'm submitting these three Flash pieces for your consideration. And then you have the names. Well, I kept like changing it back and forth until I realized, Tammy... (laughs) copy and paste it and put one that says three and put one that says one and then you can save some time so that's amazing it took me 50 times but all right so let me so we talk all the technical stuff because you know i love that no i was definitely gonna rewind and say okay sorry so what what inspired you what what's happening with 100 rejections because it's it's such a great idea i love it so last Paul, um, another one of our friends, Jenna Britton and I were talking and we were talking about that there were a hundred days left in the year. Yes. I didn't, Jenna, didn't she do that in her newsletter, her Sunday, one of her Sunday newsletters was about there's only a hundred days left. Yes. And we had both listened to something or read something on medium that was talking about this. And so we started talking about it and she said, I think I'm going to do this. Jenna and I are like the Queens of 100 challenges. We like the number 100. Okay. Um, (laughs) So I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do for that. And I actually did um, something um, physically related. I'm, I was, I was a yoga teacher for a long time and I'm, I'm a certified yoga teacher, but um, I had kind of gotten away from it because things in my life had kind of gotten crazy. So I wanted to incorporate this back into my life. And so I decided when I started yoga, a yoga practice is one yoga pose a day. So I thought, okay, for, to, to get myself back into this, I'm going to do one yoga pose for the last 100 days of the year. Cool. And then as we were talking, I thought, you know, there's something else here. And so um, I had been in a real large creation phase, um, for quite a long time. I do several different challenges. I do the story a day challenge, um, in May and September, will you write a short story from beginning to end? It doesn't have to be good. You just have to be done. Um, and so I had all of these files that I had written. I had done two NaNoWriMo's. I had done a camp NaNoWriMo. I had all this stuff. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I need to move out of creation phase into a revision phase, but I was having a really difficult time. And I kept thinking, okay, how can I set this up for myself where I will be able to move forward with this next phase of, of the writing? I'm a really big believer in learning as you go. I mean, we're both teachers and, and yeah. I believe in lifelong learning truly. So That's I've been right. taking classes. I read a lot of craft books um, and I was teaching some of these things to my students at that time I was in a middle school and I was 
having short story club and we were analyzing things and we were writing and I thought, okay, how, how can I make this a, a thing <laughs> with a spreadsheet? Right. Um, and so the 100 rejection, rejections, I thought, you know what, I'm going to set my own rules. A hundred days is into um, the beginning of April. And I thought the goal is to send one piece per day, the equivalent, and I could batch send. So if I wanted right. to send seven, but I was going to keep track of it and then see um, what would happen. So right today is day 90. Wow. And um, I've had 12 acceptances. Nice. I've had 32 rejections, which is a 38% acceptance rate, which actually yeah. isn't too bad. Um, no, it was not. higher last week. Um, you can tell we're in the coronavirus um, self-isolation because mm. editors are getting back much faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I have 44 pieces in limbo right now where I haven't heard their scent, but I haven't heard yet. Um, okay. So the interesting thing is that through some of the classes that I've done um, with like Nancy Stolman and Kathy um, Fish, which are big flash people. Um, and then like through critique groups, like you, you get a sort of small pile of things that have sort of other people have seen and you've gotten some feedback and you've done some revision. But right. when you're doing a hundred rejections, you run out of those pieces kind yes. of quick. Cause yeah. even if they get rejected and you cycle them back, cause let me tell you, there's, there's been one story that has been, um, rejected four times. And then nice. I, and then I finally revised it, but it's a story I absolutely love. And so I went right. back and revised it. Um, and a couple times that's happened, I revised it, um, and sent it back out. There's been a couple where I just sent it out again right. yeah. and it finds, and it finds a home. Um, mm. so yeah, but there's joy at each stage. That was, that was kind of the surprising part that came out of this. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. My initial question for you, just even when I heard the 100 rejections, I loved it because you said 100 rejections, not 100 submissions. Why did you make that choice? Hmm. Interesting. Because 100 re rejections sounds better. No. Um, <laughs> you know, Rejection is kind of one of those trigger words for people, and it yeah. has it. It has a sting. Um, I had a couple pieces last summer that I sent out, and I was super excited. Like I really wanted them to be accepted, and they didn't. And I, I had three really big rejections in a row, yeah. and it it crushed me for like a week. Um, and and I wrote about it. I wrote a piece called What They Don't Tell You About Writing. And it was modeled after something that Sandra Cisneros had, had mm. written. It was a beautiful writer, um, Iowa yeah. Writing Project um, or workshop um, uh, graduate. And I thought, okay, I have to turn this mindset around because I have this sting with rejection. And if if you're sending out pieces constantly, I mean, like I said, it's day 90. There's 90 pieces that I've sent or 90 submissions that I've made, but the sting isn't so bad when you get a rejection. We're like, well, okay, I'll just send it back out. You know, let's, exactly. let's, let's evaluate it and look at the data and see, do I need to revise this? Do I like the way it is? Was it just not the right fit? Um, you know, so there's a difference there. So it's, it's a different mindset about the whole thing. I mean, rejection is a daily part of life. I mean, you ask people things all the time and they tell you no, or, um, you know, like right now we can't even really go outside. I mean, that's like the big no. Um, but it's much easier. The world easier. is rejecting us right now. Yes. <laughs> but it's different when you're kind of expecting the rejection and yes. then, but you're still sending it out. See, here's the thing. Writers want their writing to be read. At least most of the writers that, that you and I both know. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. If you send it to someone, that's a guaranteed read. Right yeah. there, you already have one reader. They may not like it, but they read it. Yeah. So, so that's a different mindset there too. I think that's what I, what I love about it is that in, in the essence of the name and the intention, you've already set the right, to me, the right mindset for going in that, you know, rejection is going to come. You're, it's not that you're necessarily looking forward to it, but it is like the thing you're counting on. And when we talk again about writer, lowercase w, capital W, I think the capital W writer is the one that embraces rejection 
And I always love that, that quote that, um, now I'm going to say the wrong person. The rejection is redirection Mm -hmm. because exactly like you're saying, so many of the rejections you received weren't necessarily about like, this is terrible. It was, it's not for here right now. So, okay, redirect it, take it somewhere else. And when you can like sort of live in that, um, it's, it's a healthier sort of relationship with this thing. That's a natural part of, like you said, life, but it's a very large part of the writing life. So I, I was really, that was in, in the name alone, that was the pure inspiration for me of this whole project. 100 rejections. It's fantastic. And there can be so much joy in the rejection too. I mean, it's, it's writing is very joyful for me. I think that's why I don't have, um, any issue writing every day, um, because I don't have to remind myself to do it. Like you don't have to remind yourself to take a shower or to brush your teeth or to eat, you know, so it's kind of become ingrained in, in, in who I am. Um, but you know, there's joy in finishing a piece. There's joy in sending it out to a writing friend who enjoyed it and gave you some really great feedback. Um, There's joy in just hitting submit. I mean, there is, it's that checkoff that you have it. Sometimes there's joy in rejection because you need to send another piece out and you don't have anything ready. And so you figure, hey, if it gets rejected, I can just send that back. I have, right. I'm off the hook. (laughs) Right, exactly. But I have learned about so many great publications of short fiction and flash fiction. I found so many great writers that I didn't know before. Mm. Um, So that's, been awesome too. Like I've just, there's the learning has, has been much more than I ever thought. Like the, the project has become so much bigger than I thought that it was. I mean, it sounds simple. It's a hundred rejections. You know, you're trying to check off, you know, check off a a tick mark um, or fill in the boxes as Sam would say. Um, (laughs) She doesn't like tick marks. Um, (laughs) So there's, there's lots of, there's lots of stuff there, but, but really the biggest thing is, is it really was the bridge between my creation and my revision phase. And, and that's what I needed it for. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's, it's fantastic. I think a lot of us get sort of into that creation phase and, and forget to take the next step. I, I remember the moment I had that same realization, like, oh, I keep like, you know, spitting out, spitting out, spitting out and not like living in the story and rewriting it and making it the final product, you know? And it's, it, I think all of us get to that point where it's like, oh, there's more to this. (laughs) There's there's actually more to writing. There's that whole rewriting bit. Um, There is. And, and, you know, I mean, I know there's the phrase that writing is never wasted and it's not, but, but as you go along and you find that your skill gets better and you figure out, um, what makes a better story for your voice. Right. Some of those pieces you can go back to and say, okay, this, like I like this line and this line and that's it. The rest of it, you know, gets stretched, but it's easier to do that because you're in a different place. I mean, Maya Angelou always said, when you know better, you do better. So as you're learning, then you can go back in and, and revise and move forward. Absolutely. Fantastic. That's great. I'm I'm really so you're on day ninety now, and so how many? You're you're just going to keep on going until you hit one hundred rejections. So do you have like a deadline? I mean, there's no, I guess, way to predict when that's going to actually happen, or do you have a deadline in your mind? No, I don't have a deadline because um, now I keep thinking, okay, every time I get an acceptance, that's one more day I have to uh, yeah. extend it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and the other thing is the timing, like some, like I said, I have 44 pieces in limbo right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's, I mean, that's quite a few. I'll keep going till I, till I set the hundred rejections. Cause with my challenges, like I have to, you know, yeah. follow through. <laughs> um, and, and we'll see, I mean, we'll see if it's, if it stretches to the summer, I think the deadline will probably be December 31st though. Like yeah. if I haven't hit the hundred rejections, cause somebody was making fun of me at one point, they're like, Tammy, like if you keep getting all these acceptances, you're going to be in this project forever. Forever. <laughs> right. It could yeah. be like, you're almost like, don't accept me. 
Yeah. <laughs> it won't end. <laughs> I'm now going to send out a sentence yeah. <laughs> just to get rejected. Well, you know, there are contests for six. Um, well, oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. And so have you been doing contests as well, or are you just doing, um, you? I'm, I'm pretty sure, are, are you doing just online stuff or you're all over the place doing print uh, for your submissions? Um, I'm kind of all over the place. There's been a few print submissions because one of the acceptances just um, is just got accepted is going to be in in an anthology. So oh, that's cool. going to be print. Um, so yeah, so everywhere. It just sort of depends on what's happening. I have honestly tried to stay away from places that charge um, oh, yeah. for reading, and some contests can actually be pretty pricey. So I've stayed away from from those um, okay. for the moment there's been a few exceptions of places that I really wanted to try to get into. There's a few um, like dream publications that I would really like to have a story uh, published mm -hmm. in. I've tried a couple of those and been rejected, but I'm not discouraged. I'm just going to right upping the, um, the skill level. And, and, and one of these days it'll, it'll happen. But yeah, I've tried to stay pretty open, um, but mostly things that are free and mostly online. Okay. Cool. And did you say you're do, you're trying to do like one submission per day? Is that your? Yes, but typically oh, wow. it doesn't look like that. I tend to do a couple submissions um, at a time. Gotcha. So um, so I'll do like three to five. Um, a lot of times, like on Sunday morning, I'll do yeah. you know a couple, and it depends on if I've gotten behind. Um, mm. And there have been a couple times where I'm like. I, I have not, like, I have to sit down and revise, but again, that was kind of the, the, the magic of the project is I knew that that would happen and that I would have to. Yeah. Yeah. So how is this affecting your blogging and your, um, yeah, I mean, you have your medium page, you have, uh, Tammy's reading writing life, you have teach like it's magic. So I know that you're showing up in these places and you're teaching, yeah. And you're moving <laughs> and yeah. you got all this other stuff going on. So how are you balancing all of the things to make sure that you can still show up in some way for those uh, places? You know, that is a really good question. And, I and your get, newsletter and your newsletter. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. I, <go> ahead. <laughs> I get asked this a lot. And the honest answer is I kind of I don't know. Um, mm. So. My writing life, the, the very first thing I do when I wake up is I pull out my notebook um, and I write my own form of morning pages for, for those listeners who are, um, well, your listeners should be well aware of what the artist- Hardcore, way. the artist way. Yes, artist <laughs> way. We're, we're artist way groupies. Um, <laughs> but I would recommend to anyone who, who is interested in the artist way to definitely do it with a group because it, it makes it so much better. Um, oh, yeah. Because I had done it like four times on my own and it never finished. It's a whole different dynamic. But anyway, so um, I do that. Um, I usually pull a tarot card and um, write about that. And I have um, writing prompts that come to my inbox every morning. And a lot of times I'll write with those. I write at least 10 minutes on, on one of those. Um, and then I just, I have a notebook or the keep app on my phone, which will directly link to a Google doc, um, mm. with me all the time. If I'm listening to podcasts, I'm a big believer in writing down the thought right at that moment, because as writers, you will know, you know, that if there's something important that you want to remember, if you do not write it down, it will be gone forever. Yeah. <laughs> it will little butterflies. Yes. The idea will go to someone else as, um, as Big uh, magic. Yes, exactly. Yep. 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 <laughs> um, that, that's not, no, that's not Gretchen Rubin. That's um, Liz. Yeah. Elizabeth Gilbert. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, I know. <laughs> See, I, I couldn't remember her name either. That's why I didn't say it. Um, <laughs> But I don't, I don't know. I mean, I just, I just have the tabs. I read and write really fast. So I think okay. that that does help. And I'm going to tell you what, a lot of times on the blog and medium, a lot of those things are not um, 
scripted out. They're not mind mapped out. They, they come from the morning pages or an idea of what I have. And I've learned over the years that the more honest and the more kind of off the cuff, polished yeah. off the cuff that it is, the more response that I get from my readers. And so I was going to ask you that about the blog, if it was, yeah, if yeah. it was more like just show up and share, obviously, you know, reread and, and make it readable, but not the intense revision process of, you know, reread and structuring it in that way. Yeah. With those type with those type of, of um, pieces, they're more honest and nonfiction and kind of how I'm feeling or reacting to something. Okay. And I think that the readers can tell if I overwork it. So some of my most popular pieces on Medium and the blog um, that are sometimes shared between them are my weekend coffee share, which is basically a format um, that I got from e Eclectic Alley, who does a WordPress blog. And okay. Um, you start out each line with, if we were having coffee. Mm -hmm. And it's a very honest account. And what's interesting, it's kind of like this history of my life. I mean, I do it every week. Um, and when I'm writing those, sometimes I write them ahead of time and I put things I always talk about writing. Sometimes I'll look through the pictures that I took that week or my Twitter feed and see, you know, what was I actually doing on Monday? Yeah. Um, I do love your coffee shares. I think that's, yeah, that's a really great practice the if we were having coffee and then just going from there and then I feel compelled to respond to you like if we were having coffee I'd say <laughs> yes absolutely and yeah. I love it when people do that um yeah. and people do they have told me that they feel like I'm really sitting down with them and having a cup of coffee and having a conversation about our lives yeah. which is I mean that's like the greatest compliment as a writer to say that you've connected with my writing I have yeah. the same thing with my five minute Friday. Um, Kate Montag um, has, has a website called um, five minute Friday and she posts um, a picture with a one word prompt and you write for five minutes and it's just whatever comes out. And I'm, I'm a very intuitive writer anyway. Um, I write down what comes to mind and that I can always, you know, change it later. But that's how I've learned that I connect to people. If, if I don't, and writing so much, like you can't put the wall up, like, oh, maybe I shouldn't say that. Well, you write it right. down and then you kind of some, and you, you often surprise yourself. I use this with kids all the time. I give them quick writes where I set the timer for a certain amount and I say, okay, write based on this word or this quote or this idea and just write down whatever comes to mind. And kids have made me cry with mm. the rawness and just the emotion that comes out, um, and they've surprised themselves like, oh my gosh, I didn't know I could write this way. Wow. So when you do your five minute Fridays for, do, you share those on Medium, right? The I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, do you sit down, write, set your timer five minutes in the Medium post and then just press publish? Or do you use that five minute thing to um, inspire a piece that you sort of polish? I draft it in the medium. I mm -hmm. set the timer, but then I go back and reread it. <laughs> right. Um, because sometimes when you're typing and you're thinking at the same time, sometimes you skip words. So I do try to polish it up. Right. Once yeah. But week. not, uh, not like a rewrite, like, Oh, that was a great story idea. Let me now frame it into this bigger, bigger. No, thing. not usually yeah. just, no. just for readability. Yes. Re -read. yeah. yeah. Now sometimes okay that will then transfer to a short story that I'm revising or I start writing. Um, and a lot of times I'll combine the prompts um, when yeah. I'm doing, when I'm doing fiction. Um, Cause that's one thing I'm finding now, like I do a lot of handwriting. Um, one Same. of the, yeah. one when of I'm the prompts, prompts. I love that. Yeah. yeah, I do too. I think there's a much different part of the brain that comes out um, when you're handwriting as opposed to when you're typing. Absolutely. But it's interesting because now a part of my goal um, for the next two weeks is to get um, at least two of my notebooks transcribed into the Google Docs. Um, Can the I say that's like my least favorite thing? And that's what kills me all the time. I have notebooks and notebooks. And it's like, oh, I can't like just mail the notebooks. <laughs> no, but you should try it because what's really interesting is that it's, it's, it's automatic 
a one revision pass. Like you already yeah. put yourself. And then what's interesting too is because I have these little like 10 minute snippets from from prompts and um, you know, mm -hmm. one of my favorite prompts to do is just to write 10 random sentences that don't connect to anything. And sometimes I make those all into one story. And then sometimes I take each individual sentence um, and I make them each their own story. But sometimes you can find, hey, wait a minute. At the beginning of the notebook, I wrote about this character. And that sounds like this story here. And then I you see. can combine them. So cool. that's where a lot of stories come from as well. Cool, cool. Tammy, so much goodness. <laughs> so much goodness. So you have the... I think you've already recorded the how to get your inner child and your students to write. Yes. And that is where, what is that? And where can people find that? Um, that um, if you go to medium and you sign up for my newsletter, you can get the information there. That is a class. Um, I'm doing these interactive classes with teachers and friends of teachers. And um, we talked about, fostering a writing community and doing um, young authors project at your school or for yourself. Um, and then we did a, we shared a lot of writing prompts and um, during the interactive class, it was really nice because I had some writer friends on there as well. And there were writing prompts that they'd never seen before. So that's always exciting. Uh -huh. so yeah. So the recorded um, um, is going to be for sale. The interactive classes are free, but then you can buy the, the content later. And so, yeah, if you just sign up for my newsletter, um, in my profile at Medium, then um, we can connect and I can let you know where that is. Awesome. And do you have plans for like when you're going to roll out the interactives? Like, are they on the regular basis or it's just like to be announced? The plan right now is to do one a month. So the next one is going to be toward the end um, of April. And it's going to be about personality and communication through written and um, and verbal. Awesome. And, what and so like. just being on the newsletter you will get all the information. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. And um, also if you follow me on Twitter, which is A-T-L Bright, B-R-E-I-T, um, then I usually advertise things there. I'm pretty active on on Twitter as well. Yes, you are. I, I'm, oh, I, you're <laughs> so wonderful because I, I have like the podcast will like auto, I have it automated to go out there. So I often forget that there's a tweet out there because I just put it up with my publishing of my podcast and I'll wake up and it'll be like, Tammy retweeted your, but I'm like, Oh, thanks Tammy. <laughs> She's on there yes. again. <laughs> oh yeah. Always retweeting. So you, we are on the cusp of April and it's the month of many, many challenges. And I was on your blog. I think it was uh, teach like it's magic and I loved it because you you were like things I'm doing in April and I think you listed all the challenges Tammy <laughs> <laughs> I think you listed all of them so do you can you just give a quick rundown to the listeners of some of the things that you're doing in April in case it's something that uh, inspires them to get involved with absolutely um, so the biggest thing I'm very excited about is your um, happy camper um, I am also very excited. Program. I'm, and <laughs> can I tell you, you need to sign up, people, if you haven't, just to see the camp um, schedule. It's color coded. <laughs> it is amazing. Um, I, I used to do a weekly thing like that for my students. Every single week, I would make a, a colorful calendar of our week. Like, I am so back in my groove. I'm like, oh, I'm going to make my calendar. I love it. It's like the stationery and notebooks. Like, it's it's one of those things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it is a poetry writing month. So I have actually signed up for two Sylvia's Press Um had an offer where they're going to send a poetry prompt and I have several um, poetry books from them. So I, I am going to be writing um, some more poetry. I'm going to do a little bit of planning during my morning pages because um, story a day may is going to be in may um, where I write the story a day. Um, my Sarah Selecki prompts. I do those every morning. Those are what I was talking about the, the 10 minutes. Yes. Um, so I am doing <laughs> a hundred day project. There is a, a program um, that starts April 7th. And this one I've, it's, it's low stakes for me. It's, it's an easy one. I'm going to do one random sentence for those hundred days. And wow. I'm going to take those 100 sentences and make one story. Cause it's really interesting. If you write a, I've done this before. If you write a 100 random sentences that do not connect, and then you read them out loud, yeah. you will see that there is a story 
there. That's there interesting. Is, yeah. There is some rearranging. Um, of course, I have um, our Creative Life Scholars book club that is starting right, right. this weekend. Um, I'm taking a tarot and writing class um, with um, the typewriter tarot people in uh, Texas. They're amazing. Great writing prompts there, too. I think that might be it. Oh, I'm signed up for Camp Nano, but that's kind of cheating because I'm really doing most of the writing um, with the happy campers. That's what I, I mean, Camp Nano, part of the reason that I love Camp Nano NaNoWriMo is that it overlaps. It just sort of, you know, helps you. It's another support system for whatever else you're doing this mm-hmm. month. So that's uh, amazing. You've got a lot of stuff going on there. I'm super, super excited to uh, keep following along on all of Tammy's adventures. So, so that everyone can follow along as well, where let's just give them all of the spaces to connect with you. And of course, all of the links will be in the show notes, but just in case someone doesn't feel like clicking, <laughs> let them know, Tammy, where they can find you. So if you go to Medium, I'm just Tammy Brightweiser there, T-A-M-M-Y-B-R-E-I-T-W-E-I-S-E-R. Mm-hmm. At Twitter, I am at T-L-B-R-E-I-T. At Instagram, I'm not as active there, but I'm at Runner Tammy Z, as in zebra. Um, and then if you put in Tammy's Reading Writing Life, my blog should come up from there. So those are all the places to find me. And Medium is the best sort of path to get to your newsletter. Yes, Medium okay. is the best. And I think the link is on Twitter as well, but I will double check that. Cool. All righty. Any last words to the Stop Writing Alone community? Just community is so important and I'm so glad that we've connected and that we have oh, yeah. these um, internet spaces all the time as a yeah. writer. Our community is very important. Our jobs are very solitary, but we need each other and um, and this space is great. And then also, I forgot to mention, I also do your video prompts on Friday. Um, those go in the notebook as well. Because you know, I love me. Your, yeah, <laughs> I love me a prompt. good craft book and a good writing prompt book. Like I love it. Yeah. So. Very cool stuff. Thank you so much, Tammy. Thank you. So excited. This is this was really great. But hope you are staying well with the family and uh, enjoying your time home right now. Yes. Thank you. I'm looking at I'm looking at it as as a gift. So right. Yes. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, I'm back and I hope you can see or hear at this point what I was talking about at the top of the episode and the litany of resources that Tammy had to offer. Again, I put everything in the show notes. You've got links to every writer Tammy mentioned, every challenge Tammy mentioned, as well, of course, all of Tammy's links herself. Uh, One of the things that Tammy did mention is the Stop Writing Alone Happy Campers Club. And while we did start on Wednesday at the beginning of April, I am going to leave enrollment open until this Monday, April 8th. Um, Since we haven't had a complete week of April, I figure people could probably still jump in by Monday and get into the groove of the group. We had a really great uh, first meeting this week, just meeting everybody that's working on various writing challenges and projects, and we are going to have write-ins and uh, live Zoom calls like we did already this week. I'm going to share revision resources with everybody and just try to have a lot of fun and support one another throughout this month. This was planned long before all this coronavirus stuff happen as just a way to connect with writers specifically to support each other but it seems like it is something that is feeding even more of our souls right now to connect with just fellow humans in a way that we can while social distancing so um, I've mentioned it before the regular price of the month was $50 but because of the state of affairs right now I just brought it down to $30 for the month and you'll have lifetime access to the group Um, but yeah I put the link for that in the show notes as well if you are interested and you hear this in time please 
feel free to join us for the month. And if you have any questions about that, uh, you can definitely send me a private message uh, concerning that. Otherwise, as I've said before, I hope you're all feeling well, staying safe, enjoying what you can of this time. And I will talk to you again next week. Uh, of course, if you are checking into the weekly writing prompts, they're in my YouTube channel, the NV Rivera YouTube channel every single Friday. So you will get a brand new writing prompt this week. Just one other thing I wanted to add before I go, because you guys were kind of on this journey with me, um, that short story that I wrote for the NYC Midnight Short Story Contest last month. The results came in this week. Um, it was the first time I ever wrote a mystery, and that's kind of why I kept ranting about it on here because I was super nervous about it. And it ends up, I don't even know how I'm still in shock about it, but I've made it to the second round of the contest. This story ranked high enough to actually um, get me to the next round. So it's a really great lesson in stepping up to these challenges and just going for it. I mean, I really just did everything I could to write a mystery story, get it done in time for the deadline, and do my best. And even when I pressed send, I was like, I had a lot of fun writing that, and it was nuts, but I don't know if I did what I needed to do. And when I opened the email last night, I was just expecting feedback on the story. And, you know, that's that. And I was floored. So it was really good news. A little win for March in a weird, wacky month of a lot of confusion. But I want to just put it out to you that if there's something that you want to try and it seems like it's out of your league or not what you typically do, do it anyway. See what happens. You never know. Just always, you know, put your best foot forward whenever you try these things and just go for it. But that's it for this week. And again, I will see you soon. Stay safe, stay health, stay healthy. And I'll talk to you then. Before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the Stop Writing Alone podcast wherever you're listening to this episode today. Then connect with us on Facebook at Stop Writing Alone Facebook page or in the Stop Writing Alone with Nicole Rivera Facebook group. Check Instagram or Twitter where I'm at NV underscore Rivera to find links to our email newsletter. 